It's a Michigan Wolverines versus Purdue Boilermakers preview and predictions 2020 video coming your way right now. Hello and welcome to Intermittent Sports, the channel where we go over Detroit Lions, Detroit Pistons, Detroit Tigers, and Michigan Wolverine sports. So if you're a fan of one, two, three, or all four of those teams, go ahead and subscribe right here and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the Michigan action. All right, so the schedule has been thrown all out of whack. It's mass hysteria. It's total chaos. We're going to have a video on that and Michigan season as a whole projected for you coming soon. But for now, let's just focus on our first game of the season, which has been moved up to early September against Purdue. So let's do what we do best, break this thing into pieces, and see how we're going to fare in this game. Now it's no secret what we're all thinking when we think Purdue football. That is Rondell Moore. This guy has got to be one of my favorite athletes and players in all of college football, but he won't be on September 5th. Now if you follow college football, or more specifically Big Ten football, you would know that Rondell got injured early in the 2019 season. But check out what he did in the 2018 season when he had a full schedule to work with. He had 114 receptions, 1,200 158 yards and 12 stinking touchdowns. That's just wow. Those numbers are absolutely bonkers, mind boggling. And then after doing some research, I could be wrong here, but I saw that he didn't even finish in the top 10 of the Heisman voting in 2018. Again, I could be wrong if I am, comment below and let me know. But as I saw, he finished behind guys like Will Greer, Gardner Minshew, and Daryl Henderson. Give me an absolute break. Even if I am wrong about where he finished that year, I think most of us can agree the Heisman's just an absolute joke at this point. I mean, you basically gotta be a quarterback or a running back to win it nowadays. Now Michigan finished are probably thinking, all right, so we'll focus on Rondell Moore and we'll be good to go and we'll walk out with a W, right? Nah, dog. Check out what the next man up did in 2019 when Rondell went out with his injury. That next man up was wide receiver David Bell. He had 86 receptions, 1,035 yards, and 7 touchdowns. Now those aren't Rondell Moore numbers, but geez, they're pretty good. That means that David Bell is one heck of a sidekick to add to Rondell Moore's athleticism and elusiveness. These guys figure to be a huge threat against Michigan's secondary, which was really good a year ago, only allowing 185.5 yards per game by air. The good news for Michigan, though, is Moore and Bell might get open a lot of times and still be missed, as the guy throwing them the ball, Jack Plummer, had just a 59.8% completion percentage last year. To add to that, he averaged just 6.7 yards per completion. That means he's not much of a threat to throw the ball deep, and he had just 11 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. That means we could force some turnovers. Now, Purdue likes to throw these little short routes specifically to Roundell Moore, but we're going to be ready for that. I mean, we've seen it on tape. So at some point, Plummer's going to have to throw the ball past 10 yards and we're looking forward to that and when he's facing that really good Michigan blitz he's gonna freak out so with all this in mind why do I think Ron Moore and David Bell are still gonna get pretty good numbers simple with Michigan's very aggressive defense we've seen it time and time again we allow for one-on-one -on -one opportunities and we don't always win those one-on-one -on -one opportunities we live and die by the sword that is blitzing and sometimes we die. I mean, even a guy like Jack Plummer every now and then is going to get lucky. Now I'm hoping that in 2020, we're a little bit smarter with the blitz to zone defense ratio, but we'll see. Sometimes I'm in love with it. And other times when we're facing teams like Penn State and Ohio State, I'm not so much in love with it. On the defensive side of the ball, Purdue is relatively weak. Expect our very good Michigan run game to have an absolute field day against a defense that allowed 192.5 yards per game a year ago. Now that's already really bad, but when you factor in the fact that you're going against Hassan Haskins, Zach Charbonnet, and Chris Evans, it gets really dangerous. This is a very deep Michigan Wolverines backfield, and I'm quite fond of it. By air, Purdue's defense gives up two 243.7 yards per game that's not horrible. It's not good, but it's not horrible. I think that range seems about right with where McCaffrey ends up with in game one, though I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with even lower because we're going to have success, as I mentioned earlier, running the football. In terms of throwing the ball, he may have most of the game off as a result. I don't really expect him to have to use his arm often in this game unless the Purdue offense is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with us. That's actually kind of a bad thing in my opinion as we play at Minnesota in a huge road game in week two. We're going to need Dylan to get his reps in and this would be an excellent opportunity for him to do so. Hopefully, the coaching staff is thinking much the same. All right, so let's ask ourselves the two overarching questions. 
One, what is the defensive game plan going into this game? For me, the answer would be put your athletes that are Ambry Thomas and Daxton Hill on their athletes that are Rondell Moore and David Bell. Make an unsung hero emerge. Get some pressure on Jack Plummer, who usually makes mistakes when pressure exists. Play big against Purdue up front. Take advantage of the talent gap between their offensive line and our front seven. Two, what would be the offensive game plan going into this game? Run the ball, do what works, outpower them. Give that very young and fresh Michigan offensive line some confidence in week one. But work Dylan as much as possible. Let him throw some second and threes, second and twos. We're not going to do that. That's not really our offensive coaching staff's MO, but I'd like to see him get some reps in that manner. Someone please phone Harbaugh. Let him know that we've got Purdue taken care of. I don't like looking ahead of a game, but we have at Minnesota the very next week. Again, I can't stress this enough. Dylan has to throw the football. He needs some experience. And after the Purdue game, those opportunities are a little thin with a shortened season and not many cupcakes on the schedule. So that's it. The Michigan Wolverines versus the Purdue Boilermakers week one previewed and predicted just for you. If you're wondering the score prediction, you'll see it at the end of the video. The football season is starting in less than a month. I cannot believe it. Come on, COVID. Let us have it. And hey, we're going to be commentating the games here on YouTube every single week, live and in color and in person. That's the Michigan Wolverines and the Detroit Lions. So if you're a fan of both of those teams or just one of them, hey, go ahead and subscribe right here. Hit that bell notification so you see when we go live. We've also got live call-in shows, preview videos like this, funny skit videos. We're going to have it all, baby. So if you're a fan of sports in the mitten state that is Michigan, hey, we'd love to have you. All right, that's my time. Until the next video, God bless and go blue, baby. Duh.